Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood, enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. A little lower, a little higher. How about that? Is that good? Okay, good. <laughs> Today's project is a birdhouse made out of a scrap board we had laying around the shop. And all I want to do is really just take the paper and just touch it. I just scratched it up a bit. And I just move it back and forth. I'm not worried about grain direction right now because the inside, like I said, doesn't have to be that pretty. The shape I want is something with a nice flowing curve all the way down so it has some aesthetics to it. And then a hole for the perch. Well, assembly is pretty easy <laughs> if you got long tapery fingers. This birdhouse is a great project. One, because my wife has been on me to get a birdhouse put up because our old one's about gone. <laughs> and the other one is, is that I needed to make a project with some scrap wood I had left over. And so this is made out of poplar. Um, when I'm prototyping a lot of our projects, I use poplar because it's an inexpensive wood. You can go through a lot of it and not really be out a lot of coin. And the other cool thing is, since I have this board left over, we're going to make the birdhouse out of this flat board, which is really cool because you don't have to spend a lot of money on a thick blank of wood, which could be up to hundred bucks to make a birdhouse that probably won't last three or four seasons because birds are kind of rough on these things. At least in my neighborhood are, they are, they're really tough. <laughs> we're making it with a removable lid. And the reason I did that is because I want to have a lid on here that will hang over it. But if I need to do any maintenance or anything, I can take this down pretty easily, have a string going through there, you can get in here and clean this out pretty easily with just a little hook, so you don't really need a big hole up here. And then down here I have a drain hole. And the other thing I have is a perch so the little guys can sit there and when the babies are coming out, they don't fall out. They have something to hang on to. But the lid, again, is also important because if it rains, I don't want water going inside. Now, it's made out of several blanks that we cut out of this piece of poplar. Turn it over here, get the pretty side. I'm going to do three sections which are five and a half inches. Now one important thing that while I'm doing this, I'm gonna push down really hard with my point there. I'm gonna grab my awl here and every time I make a circle, I'm gonna mark that because I need to use that to center this back up on the lathe when I get ready to turn it. So we come here and what I really like about this project again is we're using scrap wood up and that's always a handy thing to do because you're like me, your shop is completely filled with stuff like this laying around. Oops, lost my point there. There it is. See the little tiny hole there? I hope you can. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you have all this scrap wood laying around the shop. Why not use it? Okay, so we're going to do three five and a half inch holes. We're going to do discs. We're going to do one five inch disc. We're going to do two four and a half inch discs. And then two three and a half inch discs. Now, whether or not we use them all, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> well, you can see we got all the circles drawn out on the board, and I had just enough board to get this done. That's pretty good. I won't have any scrap left over. Well, we are going to save a little piece of this wood because we're going to use it later on in the project. Now, I've got the guard down on my bandsaw here. You don't want to have a lot of diff uh, clearance between here and here because the more you have up like that, the more blade you have exposed, and that's pretty dangerous. So this will barely fit under there, which hopefully means my fingers won't go under there, but that means I have to pay attention. <laughs> we'll turn this on. And poplar is a really nice wood to cut. It's very lightweight. It doesn't give you a lot of resistance, let's say. I have about a 3 8 inch blade on here, so when it comes to making circles and cutting them, I can make a circle 
this large without too much trouble. I can follow the curve. But when I get to the smaller circles, the three and a half inch ones, they won't follow the curve very well. So I'll just kind of chop the edges off and make it look kind of like a stoplight or a stop sign, eight sided or six sided like that. Now you always keep your fingers out of the way of the blade, foam over here. Any pressure going through, if something slips, I want to go that way. When something clears to the side, I can put my thumb up there for a little bit of support. That's okay. Follow the curve here. I don't have to do a hero cut and go all the way around one shot either. Get this started again. I also, when I'm using a bandsaw, I have my weight back on my heels. Because the second I start leaning my body into the cut, that's when I go into the blade. If I have my weight back on my heels and something goes wrong, I almost sit down. So it's another little safety thing to do if you're not real familiar with using a bandsaw. But anyway, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these to go. <laughs> and so we'll be done here in a minute or so. Now the next step is to drill a hole, just one, a hole. <laughs> um, anyway, this is a worm screw. It mounts into our chuck, right? I want to drill a hole so this thing will go into the wood and grip it. So if you look at the diameter of this, it's this is three eighths inches wide, but the diameter is smaller. So this, the way I do this, I just eye this up and see if I see the threads on either side of the shaft. So this is the right diameter to make, and then the teeth will cut in really nicely. Uh, it's a very simple drilling process. I really don't have to lock this down because I'm just going to go straight through the wood. There we go. Voila, we're done. And you can see that's going to go in there nicely. I have my chuck mounted on my lathe and I'm using my wide jaws because I want this piece of wood to rest on the jaws even though I'm going to be holding this with the worm screw. This gives me a lot of sideways stability. So I'm going to lock in my headstock there so it won't rotate. I'm going to use the speed ring right here, which is really swift. It opens jaws quickly without having to use the Allen wrench to uh, open them up, which is slower. So that's in tight now. So then I will take my Allen wrench, or hex wrench, something like that. Tighten it just a little bit. You're tightening it on metal, so you really don't have to kill it there. It can only get so tight. So the worm screw is now protruding probably about 3 eighths of an inch, which is just about perfect because I really don't want it to go all the way through the wood because I need uh, a flat surface here. As you can see, it just screws on and it goes in tight. I'm gonna lock down the headstock and go just a little bit more, just that little bit. Now that is really, really solid. So unlock the headstock. I'm gonna move the uh, tool rest out of the way, hang up my Allen wrench, and I have this little bitty block of wood that I made, it's MDF. And I use spray adhesive to put some 80 grit paper on here. And the reason I did that is I needed a little sanding disc. Now, when you do a lot of sanding, you do want to wear breathing protection. But just for this moment, look the other way. <laughs> I'm going to turn this on. And all I want to do is really just take the paper and just touch it. I just scratched it up a bit. And now, this is already flat wood. That's why I don't worry about flat. But by scratching it up a bit, when I bring my next piece of wood, which I've left <laughs> all the way over here. By the way, here's my whole collection of pieces. And let's see. You can see how the birdhouse comes out of that now because look at the shape here. Ugh, I can do this without dropping it. <laughs> yeah, if it comes out like that, I'm in trouble. But you get the idea here. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to come over here. And I can take this little sanding disc and just by hand rough that up. This isn't, you know, this is not like joinery or anything like that that you're going to put, you know, make a, a baker's rack out of or a tabletop. This is just, you know, birds are going to live in it. So we're pretty cool with that. I'm going to take some medium viscosity cyanoacrylate glue right now. Now, if you wish, and I think it would hold up probably a little better, you could use like Type Bond 3 or something like that, which is a waterproof uh glue wood glue but the setup time is longer so for what we're doing i need to do something a little quicker so we can move the project along or you could even use an epoxy if you like and the epoxy would hold forever now i'm going to grab some accelerator here to help me out move this yeah that's not the disc that's a sanding disc we can bring the tailstock up 
and I have a live center in it. And I'm going to use this point. Remember I made a big deal about make sure you have a hole in here? Well, a hole in here is so I can put this on that point on my live center and center this so it's going to go on there so it's not off to the side. <laughs> but what I want to do is sand the proper side. That'd be better. <laughs> it's okay, this side needs to be sanded also. But this accelerator is really cool because you spray it on here. Now it does have a smell to it, so you want good ventilation when you do this. But when this presses up against this side of acrylate, it's going to help it seal very quickly. And so I want to be in the position I want to be in. And I'm going to bring the ram of the tailstock in. And I'm going to rotate this. I'm trying to match the grain up a little bit so I have some symmetry in here. And so there we are. Now I'm going to tighten it in like that. Now the reason I'm using medium viscosity cyanoacrylate is it gives me just a couple seconds working time when I'm using an accelerator. If you use the thin stuff, it's right there where you put it. This way I got a little bit of wiggle room and I can move the wood around. So I'm going to let this dry for just a couple minutes. Then I'm going to put one more layer on here and then we're going to start turning. Okay, I'm now mounting a Jacobs chuck with a Forstner bit. And a Jacobs chuck is simply just a drill bit holder that goes into the Morse taper on your tailstock. I've got the largest and sharpest <laughs> Forstner bit I have right now. And I also put a piece of green tape on here because that will drill me down into the bottom or right where these two meet right here. I don't want to go into this lid too much because that's the structure of my whole birdhouse right there. It's going to move the tail stock in just a little bit. I'm going to turn the speed down on my lathe and turn it on. When you're drilling, you want to go a little bit slower because it's a lot of heat, a lot of friction, things like that. It's kind of like sanding if you think about it. So now I'm just going to advance the quill and it's going to start cutting. Forstner bits are nice because they're big and fat and wide. And why am I drilling the hole? Because I don't have to turn that middle out now. The middle of the wood when you're hollowing is the most difficult part to get rid of. So why not use a drill bit and make it your friend to help you get through this process? Hey, see, I didn't even have to clear out the shavings either because the Forstner bit's really good about moving that, uh, the shavings out. So we're gonna pull this tail stock all the way back and get it out of the way. Matter of fact, I'm gonna really get it out of the way so I don't run my arm into that. That's nice and sharp. So we go here, loosen this, and what did I do wrong? Nothing, it was me. The lathe is fine. It's the uh, operator. <laughs> so that's out of the way. Gonna bring my tail, my tail stock, my tool rest up here. And I want to hollow this out. It doesn't have to be pretty on the inside. I don't think the birds are gonna judge us by how it looks. So I'm going to use a carbide tip cutter and I want the cutter to be right on center. And by right on center, I mean where this curve comes the widest, that's dead center. So I want the tool rest to be there and you can see I'm a little bit off yet. So I'm going to bring this up just a tick. And actually, if I do this while it's loose, it's easier. Because with this carbide cutter system, you want to be flat. You do not want to be up at an angle or you'll get a catch. But when you're flat, it's very friendly. Also, really aggressive, very nice to make cuts with. So I'm going to pick up the speed here. And what I want to do is hollow this out a bit uh, to where I have about a, oh, half inch, three quarter inch wall. Because this is about where the hole is going to be for the birds to go inside the birdhouse. So this has to be the widest part of the birdhouse here. And the shape that we're going to make is a little bit like an acorn. I thought it was a nice shape. And I figured it is aesthetic and it's pretty too. As you can see with this tool, I'm just simply feeding it in. And it, okay, got a little wobbly there. I want to show you something. If you're too aggressive, and I was, that was my fault, the worm screw will let loose a little bit. So in other words, I need to make sure that I have it all the way tight like that, and that when I'm turning, I do not take too much wood at one time because it will work the worm screw loose. So go back in and take light cuts now. <laughs> That's a little more pedestrian and a little safer too. <laughs> so it's working good, the worm screw's holding now. Well, you can see by the way this tool cuts, and it takes wood off very nicely. And I just move it back and forth. I'm not worried about grain direction right now because 
The inside, like I said, doesn't have to be that pretty. But I'm gonna keep working on this until I have the wall down to about there, which is about three quarters of an inch. And once I get to that point, we're gonna glue up a couple more pieces. Touching up the edge here. Since this is a flat piece of wood, it makes it flat. I don't have to worry about it being crooked. Uh, we're going to take our five inch piece of wood and it's going to attach like this. And you, now you can start seeing the shape as it starts to come down a little bit. But in here, I domed the lid. And if you can see that mark right there, that's actually where the second ring is contacting the first ring of wood or disc of wood. That's good. The reason I domed it is instead of having probably that much wood in contact between these two. I now have that much wood in contact between them. So as it's hanging, there's more surface area so it won't pop off later. So that's my most critical point to get any sort of hold on there. So I have my five inch disc here and I have my little sanding disc here. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna go back again and we're gonna add two more layers onto here. Do the same thing, cut them away. And then we're going to move to the next two, the next two. So by the time we do all this, we'll have the core of it built. Then we got to start shaping the outside. But let's get this next disc on here. And it's the same procedure. Again, like I said, if you want to use um, epoxy or wood glue, that's a good option because those are really meant to hold up in the weather a lot better than cyanoacrylate, which is kind of a brittle uh, glue, but it still works good especially if you glue your hand to it. <laughs> Gotta be careful about that. So bring this in. There we go, got good contact. I wanna make sure my grain is kind of matching. I got that little bit of working time. There we go. Okay, looking good. Okay, we've hollowed it out. We're about ready to put the end cap on, and I've got my glue on there. Uh, you might ask yourself, why didn't I just put this whole thing together and hollow it out at one time? Well, that's because it's really, really difficult to do something like that. Because when you're hollowing something that is that deep, you have a lot of torque and things going on. Let me match up my grain here while we're talking. And um, it, it just can be dangerous. Also, you're holding this on with just a worm screw. So that's not exactly the firmest hold in the world. Matter of fact, while you're doing your turning, I recommend you check that hold, tighten it up a little bit as you go along because vibration can work a worm screw loose. Anyway, there we have all of our blanks up there. And as you can see from the one we've made, I actually have one extra piece on here. <laughs> but now you can see the curve I'm going for. So I've actually hollowed this out in, with this in mind that I'm gonna do this shape and I wanna leave about a three quarter inch wall. You don't want to go through the wall. That would be a bad thing. <laughs> now we are turning in effect a bowl because the grain is running this way. So we're going to have end grain and side grain. So I do want to go for a bowl gouge and I'm going to grab my large one because I want something with a lot of strength to it. We got the lathe speed down. We're going to turn this on. I already rolled it to see if anything was going to hit the tool rest and pick this up. I'm going to step back just a little bit because if any of that super glue comes off of there, <laughs> guess where it's going to go? And don't ask me how I know that one, boy. Mm. Okay, so anyway, the first cuts we make, we don't have to worry about tearing the grain. So basically, if I start going in this direction, I'm going the wrong way. These fibers aren't supported, but that's okay. I'm just roughing this out right now, and the easiest motion is to go against the grain, so to speak. And I just want to get my shape going. So this is where you have a lot of faith in your hollowing because 
did I go too thin? You'll find out. If you did, you're going to have a uh, burnt house with a skylight or extra windows in it. <laughs> I tried to make an acorn shape on the first one I made. I like that. This one might want to be more like a strawberry, a little stubby and flat, fat. You can see it still cuts well when you're going against an unsupported cut, but the grain itself is going to look terrible. It's going to look pretty torn out. But all I'm doing is roughing in my shape right now. The shape I want is something with a nice flowing curve all the way down so it has some aesthetics to it. Again, that gets into the uh, acorn shape or the strawberry shape that you want. It's up to you what it looks like. And I size this birdhouse for the little birdies that we have. My wife likes chickadees and things like that and we don't get them very often. We've had a birdhouse out for quite a while. <laughs> and we keep getting sparrows in it. Well, I did some reading up on it, and it's because the birdhouse we have out, the uh, hole in it's too large for the little guys, so the bigger guys like the sparrows get in there. Now, you can see this cut I'm making now. I'm going uphill, which is giving me a cleaner cut, nicer shavings, and I want the apex of my curve to be out here, right here, and I want to curve underneath the lid a little bit. That gives it a nice little aesthetic shape, and also, again, it looks like a acorn or a strawberry as I'm making that shape. Now you do want to make clean cuts. Okay, now I'm going to start going downhill here. So to make the cleanest cut, I'd want to come back here and do the support back like this. But you do want to make as clean a cut as possible before you sand because again, you have the end grain coming at you, right? Well, the end grain is very tough to sand out. But I'll show you a trick in a minute on how to get rid of tough sanding challenges like that. Anyway, I'm going to keep refining this shape and then we're going to sand the outside. This is Daddy's little helper. It's a right angle drill with a sanding pad in here, and then it has double sided, sticky, well, Velcro y <laughs> discs. I'm gonna start with 80 grit right here. I've got the speed slowed down on the lathe. Nice thing about this, this rotates, that rotates. So when you're working with end grain, it really does a good job of sanding it away. And I'm gonna work my way through 220 grit on this. And looking at this, I think I went up with the strawberry shape and not so much the acorn shape. <laughs> Variety is good. Okay, now I've sanded through 220 grit. Now we've got to find a way for the birds to get in. <laughs> Did a little research. Like I said, the birds we have are littler, so this is a one-inch hole. And believe it or not, they can fit through there. That's the size for them. So I use my awl to make a starting point. And I'm using a Forstner bit, and I'm just gonna drill through here. I wanna take my time. <laughs> I don't wanna go plunging through the side and get out of control here. I've also locked the headstock, so it's not gonna roll. You can see it wiggles a little bit, it's not going anywhere. So, once we get this hole drilled, there we go. The next thing I want to do, sand up that edge just a little bit, remove the tailstock, sand the bottom, and then I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch hole in the bottom because I want drainage in here. Who knows what's going to happen when you got all those little babies in there? So you want a little airflow in there so that'll help things drain out. And then a hole for the perch. Remember when I gave out those great measurements earlier? <laughs> I left one little one off. You need to make a seven and a half inch disc, and that's gonna be the lid of the birdhouse. So I ran out of poplar, so I had a little piece of maple hanging around that I just used for scrap things like spraying finishes on top of, and here it is. 
and I'm trying to fit the lid here. When we're very, very close, I want to take a little bit more off there because I want the lid to fit over the edges of the top of the bird house. That way it'll give a nice secure fit. We'll take a little bit extra off here and I think we're going to be there. Okay, let's check that. It's kind of fun fitting and checking, see how many times it takes you to do this. Oh, that's really nice right there. I'm gonna take just a hair's breadth off more so it's a little bit looser on the fit. And then I'm using, a, by the way, I'm using a flat tipped scraper right here. A little carbide one, that's nice. But I'm gonna go to my little sweat back spindle gouge now for this cut. And I'm gonna come in and curve the underside of the lid here. And by the way, this seven and a half inch disc, I cut it out on the bandsaw. I'm holding it on the lathe using the same screw chuck system that we use for turning the entire birdhouse. So I've got a little curve here now, and that looks good. And I still have that little recess for my lip. Let's expand it just a little bit more. That looks good right there. Okay, I just need a little tiny seat there for it to sit when it's resting on the birdhouse. So we'll take this now. I'm going to lock this in and unscrew this. You can see how well that's held on there. And we'll turn it around and screw it back on. As you can see, again, like I said, this is a scrap piece of wood I've used for a lot of things, so it's really messy looking, but which is perfect for this project because we're trying to use up all the junk we got laying around the shop, right? Okay, that's on there nice and good. So I've already cleaned up my edge, so that's straight. So we're gonna turn this back on. We're gonna take our sweat back spindle grouge, gouge, <laughs> and make it curve just like that. So the rain will run off of it, just like the flakes and the chips of wood are coming off right there. So anyway, I'm just gonna round this out, sand it to 240 grit, and then we have just the perch left to turn. Now I've mounted a one inch by one inch by about three inch piece of wood in my jaws and that's what we're going to make the perch out of. And what I've been doing is testing a tin in here that fits into that hole and that is perfect. So all I'm going to do now is literally just turn a stick, <laughs> a stick with a ball on the end, something a bird can grab onto. I'm not even going to sand it because I want them to have a good grip. So here we go. Assembly is pretty easy <laughs> if you got long tapery fingers. Um, you pass your cord through that hole you had for the worm screw and then just grab yourself a little washer here. And we're just going to do an old knot here to put that on there. And that way it won't come back up through that hole. I might just leave a little slack on there so the little baby birds have something to play with. <laughs> Give them a toy. <laughs> so that pulls up and holds on to there like so. Oops, excuse me. Run that through the lid. As it turns out, instead of being a cheap piece of wood, this is some very nice curly maple I just used up. <laughs> so much for the budget into this. But that fits on there. You take your perch, you know, you glue it in like so. Um, you can put polyurethane on this if you wish, mineral oil, anything you can think of. Just don't put a finish on the inside because it could harm the birds. They peck away at stuff, they could even get into the polyurethane. But there you go. That's how you make a scrap wood birdhouse kind of neat project. Well, until the next time, keep chirping or turning.
Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood, enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.